Welcome. What lens are you using with your camera to take photographs in your wrongful death or personal injury case? These don't seem like important issues, but they're critical to the value of your case. I'm Matt Hamilton. I'm a trial attorney. I regularly practice in this area, and this is part of our video and camera series to try to help you accurately portray exactly what's happened to the jury or judge in your case. Most of us have forgotten about the art of camera taking. Remember, you have several goals that you're attempting to accomplish. Most importantly, you're trying to accurately portray to somebody that wasn't there and did not live it what exactly happened. And a photograph is worth a thousand words and a video probably a hundred thousand. What to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is try to maximize the accuracy of whatever it is that you're doing. And one of the techniques that I have used over the years is having the best possible equipment to do that. And that is a camera. Oftentimes we've overlooked this because we have these cellular phone nowadays with these cameras on them. And they sometimes are just, we think that that's just as good as a professional camera. And in some instances, it's even better. I'll give you an example. The first two things that we are going to be using is an old camera and a new camera for photographs. These are useful. You've already got them in your pocket. The way that you use these new cameras is for times when somebody does not know that they are being filmed, does not in create the importance or they're not going to get nervous if you're taking photographs or video of them or it's just a momentary thing where you have to take the photograph right then, right there, because the scene's going to change or the moment's going to be lost. Always have a good phone with a good camera on it so that you can take proper photographs of exactly what's going to happen. Sometimes you got to live with this, but the newer phones, as you realize, have larger lenses, they can take in more light, okay? This is the bare bones minimum. Now, Let's presume for argument's sake you have a little more time and you do this more professionally. In that case, you wanna invest in a DSLR camera, something like a 5D Mark IV or something very expensive that you can use over and over and over again. Remember, this video is about the lenses. One of the main problems you've got with the cellular phones is their lens is so small they can't take in all the light and you can't accurately portray what's happening because if it's not a bright sunny day, you just get a dark, horrible image. So you need to bump up and you need to go for the nice six, $800 lens. This is a Canon Zoom 24 by 105 millimeter lens. You'll spend quite a bit of money on these things, but they'll be a life changer because they can change their focus back and forth and you know exactly what kind of light you're getting in and you can control the photograph to portray an accurate view to your audience. This is going to be your mainstay on it, okay? The second thing you need to look at is there are times in which you're going to be taking highly detailed photographs, say a close-up of a product in a product defect case. It's critical to get as accurate of a photograph of what exactly went wrong as you can. Okay, if you're photographing very tiny things, you need to invest, and it's not much money, a 50 millimeter macro lens. The macro lens is the kind of things that you see people taking photographs of insect eyes. These are not that expensive, and if you are a product defect case, or if you're an injury lawyer or an injury victim, where you're taking photographs that are close up of actually harm that's happened to somebody that's hard to see, or you're gonna blow it up really big, a macro lens is what you're going to want to have as part of your arsenal. Third, if you are an injury lawyer or a wrongful death lawyer, it's critical that you have the good old-fashioned zoom lens. These lenses are great for pulling in distances or pulling out distances. Remember, when you're going out to an accident scene and you're attempting to document exactly what happened, your lens is going to change the view that whoever's seeing this photograph is seeing versus what's happening in your eyes. So whether you're using a lens that's a zoom lens, it's going to have a tendency to pull things in and flatten it. So long distances can look shorter. 
a, a, a different area of the lens on the opposite end of the scales will tend to pull things away and make them look further away. As part of your process of accurately gathering evidence, you need to be aware that their lenses do this and so that you're using the correct lens to create the correct, accurate photograph. Don't get caught in having a witness on the stand question the credibility of a photograph you took because of the wrong lens selection. And last, I'd like to recommend to you a 50 millimeter lens. This is the lens that you're looking at me right now. The reason that 50 millimeter lens is superior to what normally is used, the 35 millimeter lens, is the 50 millimeter lens is the same diameter as the human eye. So what you're seeing to me now is what you would be seeing if you were actually sitting in the room with me. The 35 millimeter lens is a little more versatile and kind of thins people up. That's why they like to use it. But it's not quite as accurate as the 50. And that's what you need to keep in track of when you're documenting photographs. Remember, you're bolstering the credibility of your witnesses by supplementing their testimony with the photograph. You're improving your investigation by documenting everything that happened. You're improving your cross-examination by showing that the other guy is lying when you show him a picture of what actually happened. And lastly, you're managing the strategy of your case by managing its evidence. Choose the right lens and that will help you do so in a more versatile and accurate way. If you want additional details, come visit my website and we've provided as much as we can to help you in the process. And if there's something still missing, I want you to call me at my office. I regularly practice in injury death cases. I'd be happy to help. I'm Matt Hamilton, and thank you for joining me.